Hello everyone and welcome back to English with Lucy. It seems like quite a lot of you are interested in vocabulary regarding relationships and you're also quite interested in phrasal verbs. So I just had this amazing idea. I thought, put the two together, <laughs> relationship phrasal verbs, because there are a lot. Um, so I'm going to talk about 12 today. Some are more basic. Some are more common, should I say, and some are more advanced. And if you use these in exams like IELTS and the first and the advanced Cambridge exams, then you should get a good response because they're quite niche. Quickly, before we get started, I'd just like to thank the sponsor of today's video, italki. I'm sure you've heard me talk about it before, but italki is a fantastic online database of teachers that you can have video chat lessons with. There are native and non-native teachers. It's a really convenient way to get in those extra learning hours and have a real conversation practice. If you sign up using the link in the description box, you will see my lovely face. And when you buy your first $10 worth of italki credits, they will credit your account with another $10. So it's like a buy one, get one free on lessons. All the information is in the description box down below. Right, let's get on with the lesson. The first phrasal verb is to ask out. It's separable, so to ask somebody out. And this is to invite someone on a date. For example, he asked me out at a party and we've been inseparable ever since. So the next one is to take somebody out. This is to take somebody on a date. So these first two are quite similar. Um, on our first date, he took me out to a restaurant. Normally, the person who is taking the other person out is offering to pay for the date, normally. I prefer to split the bill and then there are no expectations. <laughs> and I like to do this because I don't like to lead anyone on. So to lead somebody on is to give them the wrong idea to make them think that they've got a chance with you, uh, that the relationship might go somewhere, but in reality, it never will. So, so if I kept agreeing to these dates and letting this person pay for me when I have no intention of furthering the relationship, I would be leading that person on. Then we have one which is a bit more casual. This is to hook up. To hook up normally means to have more of a casual relationship with somebody. So, so if you say, I hooked up with her last night, it probably doesn't mean that it's a serious relationship, it's more of a casual fling. <laughs> But hey, whatever floats your boat. Then we have another one, which is to drift apart. And this one's quite sad. Um, to drift apart means to lose closeness. You know, once you were really in love, really close, and then you drift apart. It's quite self-explanatory. You don't, you don't see eye to eye anymore. So you could use it in a situation where someone asks you, why did you break up with your ex? Ah, uh, we just drifted apart. We went our separate ways. Next, we have to break up. To break up. This is when a relationship ends. Finito. Done. You can also say to split up as well. We split up last year. He broke up with me because I was too grumpy. However, if you then reconcile, you make up. So you break up and then you make up. To make up is to get back together. But we made up and it's been great ever since. The next one is a really nice one. <laughs> to put up with. And to put up with somebody or somebody's behaviour, it means to tolerate. So why did you split up? I couldn't put up with his snoring. I could not tolerate his snoring. The next one, to cheat on somebody. A fly. <laughs> The next one is to cheat on somebody. And if you cheat on somebody, you are unfaithful to them. Or if you are cheated on, he cheated on me, then it means that somebody has been unfaithful to you. They've gone off with somebody else behind your back. Never a nice thing to happen. You could say that they really messed you around. To mess somebody around is to really treat them in a bad way. Maybe one day you say you want to be with them and then the next day you change your mind and they're waiting on your every move. You get their hopes up, you disappoint them again. It's best not to mess anyone around. 
Now the next one is something most of us hope to do one day and that is to settle down. And to settle down means to finally find a stable relationship and stay there and have a more quiet and relaxed life. So your partying days are over, you've had enough of dating and meeting loads of new people, you find one person that you really like and hopefully really love and you settle down with them. Maybe you start a family or move in together, get married, whatever. Settling down is normally quite a nice thing to do. Right, that's it for today's lesson. Don't forget to check out italki. All of the information is in the description box. And don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Facebook, my Instagram, and my Twitter. And I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah!